This video was sponsored by Card Kingdom. You can visit their store by using my referral link in the description below. This is not a very exciting pack, I have to say. Uh, the Lotus is sweet if we're going to do some, some ramping shenanigans, of course. Um, we've already kind of done that twice today, so I don't know if I really want to do it again. <laughs> uh, Heliod is quite good if you can hit up with enough life gain and shenanigans and stuff. Um, you know, this is inscription's pretty good. I mean, there's a lot of pretty good cards, but nothing I'm that excited about in this pack. Not any of the cards where you're like, okay, I'm taking that. I'm going to make this work. Um... I think Gilded Lotus is the closest to that in this pack. Um, Unholy Heat's okay. I mean, I think, honestly, it might just be the Inscription. It's a pretty powerful fight spell um, that has some decent, um, you, t you know, the life gain effect and stuff. Uh, yeah, so I think I'd probably take it. I could even see taking, like, Fixing. I mean, Gilded Lotus definitely has the highest ceiling, but it also has a pretty abysmal floor. Yeah, I think I'll take the inscription. Definitely not something I'm excited about, but... Okay, so Gilded Goose is a really good ramp creature. I did say we already did it, but Gilded Goose is good enough that I'm pretty interested. Demon Bolt's quite good, too. Uh, Wolf Willow Haven, a nice ramp thing, too. But I like Gilded Goose even more. I think we just take the Goose here. We did, you know, in our last draft, we ended up taking something else over it, and it's one of my favorite cards, so... It was a little sad. We're going to take it here, though. One mana mana dorks are just a wonderful thing. So... More sort of ramp control stuff here. Um, Realm Cloak Giant is pretty sweet since it's a board sweeper that turns into a win condition. Um, I'm sort of leaning in that direction. I could take, like, Spring to Mind, but it's really only going to work out if we're, like, a straight-up ramp deck. I think we take Realm Cloak Giant. Ooh, Ranger Class is pretty spicy. Uh, this is the Powered Down Isika's Chariot. Yeah. Um, hmm. We could be, like, a green aggro deck, which isn't always a thing, but, you know. Uh, Battlecry Goblin's also really strong. Oh, there's a Poison the Cup here as well. This is a strong pack. Lots of stuff I want. I think... Eh, Poison the Cup's pretty replaceable. I think Ranger Class is where I'm going to go here. I think Ranger Class is better than Battlecry Goblin, even in, like, an aggressive situation. So... Okay. So here's another a very powerful Planeswalker that can sort of uh, wipe the board and do all sorts of other cool stuff. Decent ramp... Um, fixing vehicle there. Lawnmower Visionary is pretty sweet. And basically any green deck, I mean, it ramps you, and it's just already a good card anyway. It's sort of where I'm leaning here. I mean, you know, in a vacuum, Chandra is definitely the better card, like in, in most limited formats. Maybe I should just go that route. Yeah, you know what? Chandra's too Let's good. She may not be exactly what we're doing, but she's very good. Um, so here's another sweeper. Uh, there is sort of a blink deck in this format, and Thos is obviously pretty sweet if you can make that work. I do really like Giant Killer because it's a removal spell that's also a creature. Uh, and I think it's what I'm going to take here. Anything that has multiple modes in cube is, is, is quite good, um, overall. So... This pack has me a little more interested in trying to go a more aggressive route. Uh, Rimrock Knight is really good in that kind of deck. Dark Dwellers is good if you have the right spells to support it. Um, Valaged Recovery is an okay dual land. We also just have Fixing here, which, you know, Fixing's always nice. Um, Immersturm Predator is obviously pretty good. I'm kind of tempted to take Rimrock Knight and see if, like, red-green aggro works out for us. Um, yeah, we'll take the Knight in the end there. Um, okay. So, 
Another nice aggro card here in Dauntless Bodyguard. It wouldn't be more of a red-white direction, but... Um, yeah, I think we take the Bodyguard here. See if we get some more sweet aggro stuff to come our way. I mean, Terramander's a nice early drop, uh, if we're blue, obviously. I think I probably grabbed a Lotus now. I think there's two main directions we could end up going, and that's like an aggro deck or some sort of like wacky multicolor deck. Um, and I kind of like Dire Fleet Daredevil because it works in both of them pretty well. Reclamation Sages Knights too. Obviously, Escape to the Wilds is great if we end up in like red green ramp, and I mean we could. Uh, Wolf Willow Haven is pretty cool as far as ramp goes. I'm going to go with the Daredevil. I just feel like it will fit into a wider variety of decks. And we don't really exactly know where we're going to end up at this point. So, yeah. So, I think we just grab the fixing here. Okay, another nice aggressive creature in Scrap Heap Scrounger. I think we grab that. There's something to be said for Targnar here, maybe. But I still don't know what my main colors are going to be. And the Scrounger is good in any deck. I mean, we can just splash black. And be in pretty good shape on it. Uh, I think I'm more interested in Marauder here. I think we seem to be switching into a more aggressive deck. Um, this is nice. I think we probably take it over the fixing. Just because the alternate mode it has can really matter. Uh, you know, mostly you want to play it as a sweeper. But if you're ahead already, it still does a thing unlike most sweepers. Okay. So what do we have here? Uh, some good stuff. Uh, Lorehold Command is quite good. Lightning Strike's good. Rekindling Phoenix is good. Hmm. I'm leaning towards Rekindling Phoenix. It'll be good in any deck. It's another card like that. I mean, so will Lightning Strike, but I think it is just so hard to deal with that. I'm a pretty big fan. So, oh, okay. So if we were going the ramp route, Ulamog would be sweet. Um, obviously, Elder Gargaroth is quite good. But I think I just take Kenra here, and I think we just sort of... I think it looks like we're going to be a red-green aggro deck more than anything else right now. And the Kenra is a great card for that deck. It's just such a good um, drop. You know, it just... Comes down early, makes things unable to block, and then in the late game, it still has some punch. Um, Gargaroth is obviously great if you want to go a more mid rangey route, and we could, but I like the Kenra a lot in the aggro decks in this format. Lightning Helix is nice, but doesn't really look like that's the direction we're going. Oh, there's an Esper Sentinel. I mean, we could still be white red, I guess. You know, the only really good green aggro card we have is Ranger class. Um, so we could still be white red. I mean, Bodyguard and Giant Killer are both pretty good little cards. Uh, I think we grab Esper Sentinel. I think it causes enough problems that I'm pretty interested in its sort of hate bear effect. All right, Bone Crusher Giant's great for what we're doing, kills stuff, and it's just an efficient creature. Um, ooh, okay. So we've got Angel of Invention, which is a super powerful, like, top curve to have in this deck. I would like Ray Dane, and I wouldn't hate Clarion Spirit either, or Thundering Rebuke, but I think we take the Angel, and I think we officially sort of move into this red-white, um, red-white aggro deck here. And maybe we try to splash some of our green cards, but right now I don't really think so. We need to lower our curve significantly, which we can do. Um, we could take some fixing. None of it's great. Um, Team Worthy's okay. It might just be what I pick up here. It's kind of unlikely Chandra makes the deck. And Realm Cloak Giant to some extent too. Um, yeah, we'll just grab Team Worthy here. Okay, Young Pyromancer. Do we have... How are we doing on spells? We not, don't have a lot of them, but obviously it's a pretty spicy two drop. I think I'd probably take it. Could still end up mono red, too, the way things are looking. All right, I think Alcide of Life's Bounty is good enough uh, as a white card. We could take Banefire. Would I rather just have Banefire? Probably. The reach is too good. I mean, we do need to lower our curve some. 
Um, but it's looking okay. Uh, I think we grabbed the Bane Fire here. Um, okay, Laurel Command came back, and I think I think we're down with that. It's not quite as aggressive as some other cards, but it does have a big impact on the game. And I think I like it more than Clifftop Retreat, for example. Um, yeah, looks like Ramp was pretty open. Dromoka's Command is obviously really strong. I guess if we ended up back in green-white, I'd be interested. Overgrown Farmland could potentially get us back into green-white. I would need a lot of fixing, though. To, like, the best card we have is Ranger Class, and splashing a two-drop permanent isn't usually a great idea. Um, but, yeah, I'll take the farmland there. Um, you know, not terrible. It gives us some fixing. It's definitely not aggressive. I think the Ministrant is probably just better, but... If we were going green, it would be interesting to go that way. Uh, don't really have enough to want either of those, but I guess I'll grab a Magma Quake. I like the Rebuke here. The land is interesting. Once you end up in the more aggressive decks, like, fixing isn't that important. We would like to have some black mana, I guess, at some point. Just, like, one random land that produces black so we can get our Scrounger back somehow. Um, so, that's something to keep in mind. Okay, so there's Anax, which is awesome. That's probably where we go. I would love to get an Ember Cleave, obviously. Who wouldn't, right? Um, but yeah, I think we take Anax here pretty happily. I don't think we're going to be interested in... I don't think we'll need Deemworthy. I think this is kind of what our curve's going to look like overall. Looks pretty good. I mean, the Marauder, you know, it's going to be better if we were more graveyardy, but it's still a two mana three one. It has some pretty real late game upside, and I like that. Um, ooh, okay. So this is good payoff for going the aggro route, pumping all your stuff, making double tokens. It's another good higher curve thing to have. I mean, I do find that this deck tends to be at its best when you have like very few things that cost more than three. But I think Zeriel is good enough that I want to take it. Uh, Frenzy and you know is pretty good. I I kind of hope Scorch Spitter Wheels. I mean, it's just like a nice little creature for yeah. this deck. This deck is really just like the fun patrol deck in the format. It, it punishes everybody for doing silly um, uh, things, which is what a lot of people want to do. It's what we've done so far today is silly things. So I'll probably just grab the Pillar. I could grab Temple of Malice to get my random black mana, but. Pillar of Flame, these cheap removal spells that get early blockers out of the way are pretty important for this kind of deck. Um, Den of the Bugbear is pretty good. Thalia is interesting. I think we probably want Thalia. We don't have that many spells, and she's a big problem for people, and she has good stats. I mean, I do like these removal spells and the creature land, but Thalia looks pretty good for us. <sighs> Where's that Ember Cleave? I know we haven't seen it yet. That doesn't mean somebody else didn't take it, but... But, yeah. So, here's a land... <coughs> excuse me. That gives me the random black mana that we want. Mecha Godzilla, <laughs> Crystal and Giant, in other words, uh, is a pretty good little three drop, but... I think I'm pretty interested in grabbing one source of black here. I mean, we're not playing these lands... Just so that our Scrap Heap Scrounger can really do what we want it to do. Plus, we can cycle it away. Ooh. Most of our stuff is red. It makes me pretty interested in Torbrand. The problem is, our curve is already so high. And I don't know what I would cut for Torbrand at this point. And our, we're not mono-red. If we were mono-red, I would slam Torbrand. I think, given what our deck looks like, maybe we're just interested in Usher of the Fallen. Nah, we're taking Torbran. I, I gotta do it. We could still go Mono Red, for that matter, so. <laughs> uh, nice two drop in Charming Prince here. And, you know, uh, sure, we'll grab Hallowed Fountain. <sighs> Not really any random aggro stuff making its way back to us, unfortunately.
Stomping ground, not really going to give us enough to... Um, splash any green things. I wonder whether I want Deem Worthy in the end. Maybe. Yeah, somebody else jumped into aggro here late because I don't even think the um, uh, Scorch Spitter is going to wheel, and that's a pretty niche card. Um, you know. It... Yeah. Okay. Ideally, I think you have a lower curve in this deck um, than what we've got, but I think our deck still looks pretty pretty solid. I mean, we have a pretty low curve, I guess, you know. Um, we do have one random black land, so occasionally we can get back our Scrap Heap Scrounger. I don't think we play these, like, sweepers and stuff. I think we just roll with this. Looks pretty good. Um, yeah. Yeah. I do definitely find more success with this deck than more consistently than any of the, like the nonsense decks with this kind of aggro deck. Even one that doesn't have an optimal curve. So yeah, I mean more fixing might have been nice to help us play Torbrand more consistently, but I still think we're doing okay. It's a pretty good hand. I mean we got like all our spells in a Pyromancer, which you know, that's that's pretty good. <laughs> if the Pyromancer survives. Um, anyway. So another aggro deck. I'd probably just go ahead and Pilgrim Initiate here. I could have been greedy, but I think just just putting the the deck that got to go first on the back foot a little bit matters. All right, so now we'll play Pyromancer and we'll see what happens here. If my Pyromancer gets to live, I'll be happy, but I think there's a good chance it gets killed by a Pillar of Flame or whatever. Okay. Um, I think we just have to take this, given the situation. And then we go ahead and rebuke this. I probably just attack here. We can deem worthy the outcast before it does its thing if we have to. Yeah, going first would have been nice in the mirror, that's for sure. So would that guy. It's a sweet uh, newer card for the red deck. Makes sense. You know, it's a little rough sometimes to have to do things like that. But I think our opponent was right to do it that way. Okay. Let's play Earthshaker Kenra here. Um, then I'll also play Dauntless Bodyguard. We'll target our Kenra. They probably weren't blocking anyway, but... Maybe now I get some random value somewhere. You know, we probably played more lands than this. Usually in this deck, you run like 15 or 16 lands, and I didn't really think about doing that. I probably should have. I mean, again, we're not an optimal version of this deck. Um, yeah, that card is nuts. And it's about to attack us, so. <laughs> um, 
I can kill it is the good news. I think we probably just go ahead and block. You know, maybe we don't. They're far enough from, from the six lands. But I think just blocking Soulscar Mage is probably more valuable. Okay. So, go ahead and deem worthy their disciple. Are they going to flashback Devil's Play? <laughs> That's kind of crazy, because I'm only one man away from getting it back. And there it is. <clears throat> I think we have to run 17 in this particular deck, which is a bummer for sure. I wonder if they can burn us out here. Apparently not. Ooh, that's pretty spicy. Okay. Rimrock Knight is such a sneaky good card. Ooh, if they kill my token in response, that might not be good. Okay, good they didn't. I'm glad they didn't. Looks like they can kill it still. So if they killed it in response, I wouldn't be able to cast my Rimrock Knight. All right, so they are out of gas now. Um, I think we just play Giant Killer here. Short on white mana there doesn't feel so good. Um, we'll attack. Drop him to three. Come on, white mana. The only good news is our opponent doesn't seem to have anything either. Maybe they have a kill spell here. They do. They drew one of their mini lightning bolts. Ooh, that's hilarious. We get to play their di our Dire Fleet Daredevil and then use one of their lightning bolts to kill them. Beautiful. I guess tap blocker attack with 3-1 would have been pretty good there. You might be right. I love stealing an opponent's lightning bolt and killing them. Hey, TPO3. Okay, pretty good. Um, you know, it's less aggressive maybe than an ideal hand in this deck. Like, we'd have a two-drop, but Scrap Heap Scrounger into Annex isn't something I can complain too much about. Hmm. I think we'd probably still go with the Scrounger. It's tempting to go Pyromancer and then Rebuke something, but... Hey, Ranger class. 
That is less than ideal. Um, sure. Then we play Annex. Then next turn we can play Pyromancer plus Rebuke, which might feel pretty good. Looks like it's going to feel pretty good. Man, they take out our Scrounger like that. It's not very nice. Okay, so Pyromancer. Rebuke. Attack them for three. We deem worthy Rishkar here. Attack with Annex. <clears throat> Love me some young Pyromancer. It's such a funny card, too, because the character in the art is a Chandra fanboy, if you've never noticed. He's like dressed like her and has, can't tell unless you look closer at the art, but has like a necklace on with her face on it. <laughs> okay. Well, this is where running as many lands as I am doesn't feel great, huh? It's interesting they decided not to level this up. So I could attack with Anax here. I mean, it's not a terrible plan. He kills one of them. But I can also just wait things out a little bit, which isn't ideal in this deck. Oh, I guess I want to draw a card more than they want to. <sighs> Is it a little girl? I'm pretty sure it's a, it's a man or a boy based on the art, but I could definitely be wrong. Mostly because they're shirtless. <laughs> uh, but that could mean, you know, that could be a lot of things. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to end my turn. I don't love it, obviously. <clears throat> Once that thing gets big enough, I can kill it is the only good news. Uh, but we are supposed to be the beatdown, and we're not really doing it right now. What do they go after? Pyromancer or Annex? Annex. Makes sense. I suppose. So they attack for three here, gain three. Goodness. It's easy to have a knee-jerk reaction here about the fact that we seem unable to... Um, we could, we're drawing so many lands, but... I think maybe it's not a knee-jerk reaction. I mean, I felt like it was a mistake as soon as we started playing with this deck that I should probably be running 16, but... We have just been kind of unlucky here. So they're probably putting a counter on Arcus Acolyte because of lifelink. They do. And I think that means a giant killer here. <clears throat> oh, brutal. Okay, so we take six. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know how we're going to win this one. Uh, 
If I get to kill Micaeus here, that'd be cool. <laughs> They're not going to let me, though. So Pillar of Flame doesn't do anything. They've got Lifelink and Reach. I think they got us. This is a pretty good card for countering the more aggressive decks in the format between being reasonably efficient, gaining stats, and everything else. Oh, yeah. I think we're dead. I think we've arrived at that moment where we're dead. <laughs> I can Pillar of Flame Micaeus now. Yay! So, we take nine. <laughs> hmm, interesting. Uh... We are going to populate the board significantly here, if nothing else. Hmm. I could hold off on Bone Crusher here. But I think just burning them... I mean, they're not going to give me a situation where I get to... Where I get to kill their um, creatures anytime soon. So I think just playing out everything there is ideal. Especially because we're at two... It's not like we exactly have a um, great situation in terms of the time to just sort of be like, I don't know if I want to do that. So what happens when you die? Annoying things. Um, uh, I guess killing Vosri's lieutenant makes the most sense, maybe. I mean, the lifelinker's a problem. Yeah, maybe. We're just going to try to kill the lifelinker. There's a really good chance this goes sideways on us, but... <sighs> yeah, so they get a 2-2. I'd have to draw pretty well here to not be dead. <laughs> now... Oh. Fascinating. So, shelter doesn't do much. Find. Find isn't too terrible. I can get giant killer. Oh. The mana value, though, is too high. Yeah. Well... Oh, no, it's not. Good. So let's do find. Let's cast find. Get back giant killer and bone crusher giant. Man, we... This is pretty spicy overall. Um, protection from multicolored. So I can kill Bosri's lieutenant on their turn. We know the two cards in their hand, so I think we just pass. That was pretty spicy. I mean, there weren't very many cards that could, like, actually help us survive a turn. That was one of them. Getting back two cards with adventures is pretty, pretty nuts. Gotta say. <clears throat> yeah, sure. Okay, so this is when we go giant killer, kill Bosby's lieutenant. And it's a question of how do I want to block here? There's not really a good way for me to kill anything, so I think I just have to chump with the tokens. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> I can do Dire Fleet Daredevil again. There's not anything as good, unfortunately, this time, but... 
We could do it again. Um, so before they untap or anything, I think we want to use Bone Crusher Giant to kill the Acolyte. Um, I mean, we get Shelter, which is a f card that will, um, draw us a card. But I'm not sure I'm that excited about that. Maybe I just play the Prince and gain the life. I could hold on to the Prince and wait till they play a spell or something. Or for a turn where it's more meaningful. Although, I think gaining the life is a big deal. Because right now, all their creatures are lethal. So I think we kind of have to gain the life. Now that I think about it. Um, pretty weird that we're the aggro deck here. And we're sort of trying to grind this game out. I don't envision it ending well, ultimately. Yeah. But, uh... That would have been something we could have cast with our Daredevil, but, you know. Alright, so we have to block Ugly here. Not too surprising. Oh, we actually don't have to block Ugly. I forgot I have more than two life now. Okay, so... Yeah, I still have to block pretty Ugly. I can only let one of them through, so there's not really any way for me to block. I mean, there is a way for me to block and kill something, but... And then I just, like, single block everything else. Doesn't feel great. But... That's where we are. I guess maybe at this stage of the game, it's just gonna be better to kill the bigger creature. And then, uh, yeah. Uh, we tried. Man, imagine if I'd actually done damage to them in the early game. Might have had a chance here. Alright. Yeah. That Ranger class early was very hard to beat. Um, unsurprisingly. The card is bonkers. We just really never, like, once they got that going, we were in trouble. We kind of got them on the back foot in the early game there, but it just wasn't enough. It was not enough. Oh, do I want to change my lands? See if I have time to click cancel here. I may change my lands. Let's look at our curve real quick. I think maybe I've just been unlucky, and we kind of have to run the number of lands we have, but at the same time... I could maybe see cutting a planes. I don't know. It makes our mana pretty bad if we try to do that. Because we do need to consistently be able to play one drops. I think we have to run 17. After all, we have three fives. Um, yeah, I think it's fine. It's not amazing, and I think the ideal aggro deck, as I've said, is just like a, a red-white deck with a bunch of 1s, 2s, and 3s, and cheap removal spells, and like 15 lands, and we just didn't draft a deck that can do that. Um, we're a little, we have a little bit more of a mid to late game than like most of those decks do, um, but we're also not nearly as good at wrecking our opponent early as most of those decks are, so it's, it's interesting. Yeah, you can use Burn Down the House for the aggressive option, but it still seems like an awkward card for our deck. I mentioned that when I took it, but... Okay. It's kind of a little bit of an awkward hand when you don't really want to play Giant Killer. <sighs> but maybe we just do here. We have other removal. I think we probably just do it. If I had a better curve out, it, it would make... It would be, like, a really easy thing to do, but we didn't, unfortunately. We do not have a curve out.
Yeah, not much of a fast start from us, which is kind of what we would like to have against a deck like this one. <clears throat> if we draw a red here, it's going to be pretty sweet. So, I did draw red. I have to decide whether I think killing Oracle of Moldiah is better than just playing Torbrand and going for it here. I could cycle Deem Worthy to kill Oracle of Moldiah. Um, I think playing Torbrand is too good to pass up. Maybe. I'm second-guessing myself here. I can also just play Rebuke and Dire Fleet Daredevil, and sure, I don't get anything from the Daredevil, but... If Torbrand's still alive when I untap, I can kill basically anything they play, but they may be able to get to six mana for Sublime Epiphany. I think... I think we play the Rebuke and Attack. It's maybe a little more conservative, but... Oh. I should have played my Daredevil, too. I am going to play it. But I should have played it to do one more damage with Anax there. We're going to do a massive chunk of damage this turn. I'm hoping enough damage that our opponent can't really recover. They do still have two mana up, which matters. Uh-oh. Arena's trying to crash on me. Yeah, that's not good. I'm going to have to close Arena and reopen it to be safe here. Good old Magic Arena. I'm going to be real mad if we end up not getting to have that epic turn we're about to have. Looks promising, though. Come on, Arena. <laughs> Come on. It's not looking great. Why did they get to untap so that crap <laughs> oh my god we're gonna lose the game because of this that is some nonsense that's never what you want to be doing okay so I can cycle Deem Worthy here to make sure Annex dies, at least. That's a really good draw. I mean, but imagine if we got Torbrand in play like we were supposed to. Um, and, uh, yeah. Would have looked... Even crazier here. So we do play Torbrand here. They don't have any blockers after all. Alright, we won anyway, so I can't complain. But that got... Coming back to that was a little scary, but luckily 
we had such good stuff going on in our hand. It didn't matter that we missed a whole turn cycle, apparently. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, Arena is being very laggy, and it's not something on my end because my CPU usage isn't like insanely high or something. <sighs> but yeah, that was not fun. Luckily, we won anyway, so I can't complain. Like I said, but, well, we won a game where we missed it. Like we got time walked effectively by the clients. Hope we can win some more. Managing to get that win does feel pretty good, though. Pretty good hand. Um, you know, it's not the best at curving out, but just playing Thalia and, like, Charming Prince is pretty good. Pretty good. Thalia does make, like, these two cards worse, but it's more likely to hamper our opponent than us early... Uh, oh yeah, definitely more likely. So I think we just slam Thalia here. Slow our opponent down if we can. I mean, if they kill it, that's fine. If they don't kill it, we just start playing more and more creatures. That's a pretty good answer to Thalia, unfortunately. And basically all the creatures in our hand. <laughs> um, the 1-3 is just... Yeah, I guess we still play our Ministrant here. End our turn. So this would be a turn where if they don't kill Thalia, we'd be able to play Zariel. Or if 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 I didn't have Thalia. We'll see if that matters. Okay. Okay. Um, so Bone Crusher will cost three on its non-creature side right now. Um, might be okay with that. Probably am. I get a 3-3, three, three, right? I kind of like the idea of just doing it now. Just because we know they might be able to do something about it. So I'm just going to Bone Crusher Giant the Apparition right here. In our turn. It is funny how much our <laughs> Thalia has bothered us, but it's probably bothering them a lot more. He says, hopefully. Using Bone Crusher Giant to kill an apparition feels pretty good because we don't use up a whole card and we still get our thing back, so it sort of feels like a two for one. It's probably more accurate, like a 1.7 for one or something. If you really do the math on value there, but. It's pretty good. That's the point. So this counter spell costs four. We know that much. Hello, Kiro's Girk. Glad you enjoy the content. Yeah, they're going the kind of slow route here. Um, attack them with our 3-3 three, three here. Then we'll play Bone Crusher Giant. I think I might scry with Charming Prince. Because <clears throat> hitting a land right now would be pretty big. I 
I'll draw one of them. I don't really want to draw both. So the thing to keep in mind is they will have counter magic available. Oh, they cycled the sensor. Um, I mean, I guess a mountain would have been way better, but we actually don't have that red of a board right now, so it's not exactly an emergency. Thalia has definitely affected them more than us, even though it is sort of making our hand funny. All right, so their plan is to try to mill us out. That's fine. I think we can pressure them enough that I'm not super alarmed about that. I would have liked that mountain, but, you know. So we know they only have two mana up right now. So if I draw a fifth land, which we now no longer know if we'll do. Um, yeah, that Perilous Murr is not awesome for us. Uh, it ends up wrecking us numerous ways. I think maybe I just swing here. <clears throat> if they kill Thalia, it's not that big of a deal. It would let me play Zeriel in my second main phase. So at this point, I'm kind of okay with it. I think just swinging out here seems fine. It's not awesome. But if they decide to kill Thalia, we're cool with it. If they don't kill Thalia, we do damage to them. The whole deal is acceptable to me. Okay. So the Murr, I guess, probably does two to the giant. Yeah. Um, and then I think we just play Zeriel here. Devil tokens with Torbrand is pretty spicy. If we draw a fifth land and they're tapped out, we're going to be pretty happy. But losing Thalia may allow them to interact with us a heck of a lot more. We're about to find out. I mean, they have enough mana at this point that Thalia has had to, you know, reaches a point where she's not nearly as useful anyway. Um, but yeah. Ah, uh, Terramander. I can make it a 5-5. Five, five. It's pretty spicy. So, yeah, we just let that happen. Your death has now become a delight. Okay. We know they have a counter spell, like 100%, because it's right there. Um, <laughs> three, five, six... So the Adapt here still costs 7, right? Yes. The Adapt still costs 7. I kind of think playing Young Pyromancer... Drawing out that counter spell and seeing what happens sounds pretty good. If they counter our Pyromancer, they counter our Pyromancer. If they don't, I think I probably just plus one Zeriel here and swing out. They'll be able to kill Zeriel, but only if they use Terramander's ability, which means they won't add to the board. So we're just going to plus one here. Unleash your ferocity. Okay, there's one spell. So, good chance here what Terramander does is adapt on their turn and kill Zeriel, but that means we untap and play Angel of Invention or Torbrand or Lorehold Command, and any of those is going to be a pretty big deal. Yep, I'm okay with that overall. So 
So we know they still have counter magic up. Um, we can no longer use her plus one to actually do a thing. Um, so I think I probably just use her zero here. I guess attacking with Charming Prince is relatively free. So I'm going to do that. And then use her zero ability. And play Lorehold Command, I guess, at the end of their turn. See what happens there. Um, yeah, and then use... Make a double token. So yeah, I think we'll play Lorehold Command at the end of their turn. It'll force them to either use their counter magic or... Oh, that's annoying. Yeah, that's that's not what you want to see, generally speaking. When they have Teferi's Tutelage in play, especially. Um, I could use the command now, but I don't think there's that much value in it. That drops us to 11, 9 cards. Yeah. Ooh. Spicy. So they can mill me here. <sighs> Finding a way to do 17 to them before they mill us out is going to be a little tricky. Although, if they tap out, I have more of a chance, obviously. Um, yeah, let's... Can I find a way to do an... Oh, never mind. <laughs> they mill me out here because of the two of those together. Yeah. They got us with the mill kill. It's too bad we didn't have one more card in our library, huh? Yeah. One more card in our library, and I think we might have been able to find lethal there, get close to it with Angel plus this ability, but we didn't have the uh, the ability to do so once we had zero cards in our library. <laughs> it's too bad they didn't mill our Earthshaker Kenra earlier. Yes, yeah, control decks like going for mill is a very real thing in this format, as we've seen today. I think that was a game where we just weren't as aggressive as we'd want to be. Yeah, I mean, not a great hand. We just needed more one drops and less high drops, basically. I think, for this deck to really be what you want it to be. Okay, so Bloodbraid Marauder into Earthshaker Kenra is not too bad um, in terms of just doing a bunch of damage quickly. I actually think we just play our Ministrant here, though. Oh, actually, we just play Annex. So then we play the Kenra next turn. We have a pretty good curve out now, thanks to the Kenra. So yeah, we can play Kenra, make that unable to block, and hit them for nine. Seems pretty good. Wow, we're going to have a really nasty curve out if, if uh, things keep going our way. So next turn we play Angel of Invention. So if they're like tapped out here, we just do a colossal amount of damage to them. Um, 
They don't tap out, unfortunately, for us. Um, the question is whether I want to try to go off with the angel here or go a little more conservative. Which would be like play obligation and bodyguard. Um, I think that's what we're going to do because of their mana. And we can still do a ton of damage here. So I think we play our Dauntless bodyguard here. See what they do. We're going to make Annex gain the ability to become indestructible just in case they have some nonsense. Um, ah, yes. Settle the wreckage. Should have been more prepared for that. We will search up lands, though. Not that they do us a whole lot of good. I forget you have to worry about Settle the Wreckage in this format. Getting rid of our Kenra permanently is also pretty nasty. So, the question, I mean, I'm playing the Angel. The question is whether I want to make two tokens or make the Angel big. It seems like going wide is probably more valuable. There's a good chance they have ways to interact. Yeah, I think we just go wide. <clears throat> so if they block the ministrant, I get two two twos, so it's not exactly a easy situation for them. Yeah, I think that's what I would do, is just block the bodyguard. I wonder if they have the one blue mana bounce spell. Is that in this format? Or any... I guess it could be a number of one mana... One blue mana bounce spells. Um, okay, so under turn... Do they have a way to stop us? Okay. Okay. So, I think we'd probably go ahead and deem worthy. Well, I guess I could hold on to it to kill a more problematic creature later in the game. I kind of hope there's not a later in the game, though, is the thing. Um, yeah, so do that, do that. Play our Ministrant. Leave up mana for Deem Worthy. That is certainly a more problematic creature because it can block. <laughs> yeah, I should have I should have done this in response already. See if they have a counter spell to protect it. If they do, we might be done here. Close to it. <laughs> they still get to draw the card. Which is why I should have done it before allowing them to draw the card. But, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, 
All right, so we definitely just swing with both of these. They have to block the Ministrant. We go to one. We get two, two, twos. So they need a sweeper. And they could easily have one. They're a blue-white control deck. <laughs> but that is what they need. Some sort of sweeper. I feel like if they had one, they would have just pumped their whole board and swung there ahead of the sweeper. So... Ah, uh, our friend Sphinx's uh, revelation has returned. Luckily, they weren't able to save themselves with <coughs> this game. No red mana here is brutal. I think we have to mulligan it for that reason. I mean, turn one Esper Sentinel can be nice, but there's no guaranteeing our opponent plays things that trigger it. And for that reason, I think we have to mulligan. Ugh. Similar hand. Uh, we keep it. I think we have to send Annex back, as brutal as that is. Because we don't have a good aggressive hand anyway, I don't see a reason to play Giant Killer. We're going to have to try to win this game a different way <laughs> than, like, trying to curve out. Um, I do think I just play this Rimrock Knight, though, and see what happens. Feels like we might just get a couple of 3-3s three on Arena Cube today. Okay, so go ahead and pillar her. I just feel like Giant Killer doesn't do enough on this board to be worth playing when we can use the alternate effect. Attack. That gets bolted. Play our Ministrant. End our turn. Thank you for the follow, Lord Groove. And Buta Mafian. And thanks for the resub, Hefty Lefties. <clears throat> not looking good for us, though. You know, mulliganing is not good. In case you didn't know. <laughs> Tends to not be very good. So, Phoenix of Ash is a problem. I think we probably block the Disciple. It's basically an even trade. We get two 1-1s one -ones and they get a card from the spell book. I don't get to know what they drafted, huh? I guess that makes sense. We'll attack with both of those. Play Scrap Heap Scrounger. In the turn. got to draw really well to find our way out of this particular situation. Um, okay. Well, 
We attack with the scrounger here. Um, we didn't just end our turn, unfortunately. We've never drawn our one land that could actually let us get our scrounger back. So, they're going to do that thing. I can giant killer the adversary now. But I can also kill it with Bane Fire reasonably easy. Would I rather save it to kill the Phoenix on a turn when they pump it? I mean, there's just no guarantee they ever do. So I think we just go ahead and use Giant Killer here. Kill the adversary. And we just take the two. We could block it, but that would be... A little bit aggressive, I think. Okay. I haven't seen our Phoenix yet today. I'm pretty happy to see it here. Now that's a Phoenix. <laughs> Aww. That's sad. Um, I think with Banefire in our hand, we just... We just keep chipping away at their life when they let us. We can do five with it right now. Hmm. That doesn't seem like great news. Doesn't really matter. I mean, as far as we know, let's give them a planes. <clears throat> okay. Another land. So I think we tap down Phoenix of Ash here. And I think we attack them down to eight. End our turn. So we can do six now with Banefire. <laughs> hmm. Okay, so now we're kind of all in on Bane Fire. <laughs> we wouldn't hate just drawing a couple lands. Okay, well. It's not a land, but it is obnoxious for them. Would have been sweet to go like Esper Sentinel Thalia in one of these games. Good old Jaya's Immolating Inferno. Oh, God. I don't want to give you either of those. I guess I'm going to give them dragon fire. I mean, the apparition's worse because it lets them add to the board, so... They got some spicy things over there. Surely they pay one, right? Yeah. So this Phoenix can kind of kill us out of nowhere because of its ability to pump its power. So luckily it didn't that turn. But I think we'll be dead in the very near future unless... Okay, that's pretty sweet. So we definitely play our Daredevil here. Do we just bolt them? Is that... Is it crazy to bolt them? <laughs> Instead of get Scorching Dragonfire to kill the Phoenix? <sighs> How much can they pump this thing next turn? Um, 
They can get up they can get it up to six. I almost feel like bolt them is better. Cause it's not like Bane Fire can be countered or anything. And that makes Bane Fire lethal if we get to untap. Even if they attack with Den of the Bugbear and this, it's not enough to kill us. Let's just bolt them. If they have a way to gain life, maybe I'll regret this. Maybe Dragonfire's just smarter, huh? <sighs> yeah, it's smarter. I still have a threat on the board. And Banefire will still be lethal in the near future. I don't know. This is a hard one. I think I bolt them. This is going to be interesting to see how this goes. Evil cannot withstand a righteous army. I wouldn't have had lethal next turn no matter what, unfortunately. If I bolted, if I killed Phoenix of Ash, that wouldn't have been true. Because... They can play blockers. So, now it's lethal. I think we're actually going to get to do it our way. They're going to be at 5, and we can just Bane fire them the rest of the way there. They can attack us here for 6. See, it definitely wouldn't have worked out if we bolted the Phoenix. I'm glad we did what we did. Because we get to kill them, like, regardless of whatever they might have going on, you know? So... So we have, let's just do seven. <clears throat> you think they have a helix? <laughs> if they had lightning helix in response there, it would have been, would have been soul crushing. Luckily they didn't. <laughs> Luckily there was not a helix. Yeah, if we just killed the Phoenix, we would have lost that game. It's hard to know that's how it's going to go, obviously, but yeah. Okay, we really haven't had very many hands that started like with a good curve out. We've drawn into a few good curve outs though, so I can't complain too much, I guess. But uh, it's been kind of weird. I mean, we don't have enough ones is part of it. See, we actually are going to end up drawing into another pretty good curve out here. Bone splitters in this format, huh? Mirrodin equipment. Um, I think I showed them our planes. There's a planes. Isn't that exciting? So a kind of funny thing I could do here is play Charming Prince, blink our Dauntless Bodyguard, and then make it so it can give this indestructible. But I think just attacking here, trading for Acquisitions Expert, and then playing Charming Prince to Scry 2 is probably... Probably makes more sense. Um, I mean, this is a creature we can play, and I like that, but I think we pretty desperately want more mana. We are halfway to Delirium, but 
halfway is not enough. So I think we bought him those, both of those. <clears throat> well, I'm glad I can kill that right away because it obviously becomes a massive problem if you don't deal with it quickly. Uh, good old Knight of the Ebon Legion. So, yeah, we'll just go ahead and rebuke it. I wonder if they have supernatural stamina or something like that. If they do, we can still take it down with Giant Killer later. I guess I could have cycled... Oh, no, I was one mana shy. Okay. I'd rather they have that than supernatural stamina or something. So, Like before, given what's going on, they have a Bone Splitter. I think we just hold on to our Giant Killer. We're going to be able to use its ability... Um pretty effectively, so. <clears throat> Team Worthy, these cycle cards from Hour of Devastation or whatever are pretty cool because you would play either side of this card pretty happily. Like, the ability to four mana, do two to anything or any creature and draw a card is, like, a pretty big deal. That was a very good draw, because um, this was going to be a problem. I think we do kill Midnight Reaper as opposed to, to uh, Dread Wanderer, because the Reaper definitely causes more problems. But yeah, either side of this would be good, and the option is awesome. Still don't really want to play Giant Killer. Thank you for the sub, Evan. Yeah, we'll take we'll take two. Not that we have much of a choice. Oh no. So we can kill God Eternal Bond too, but obviously it goes into their library, third from the top or whatever. There's that fourth land. Um I guess I'm just going to do it. Seems like it makes sense. Kill it, then play Giant Killer. Seems fine. I could wait to do it until their turn, but yeah. They seem to be a sacrifice deck, which is pretty sweet. So we'll go ahead and kill God Eternal Bond 2 here. Temporarily. Replay Giant Killer as a creature. Attack for two. We're going to have to draw really well here. Oh, God. Now even drawing well won't necessarily save us. Um, I mean, I have like Rimrock Knight plus Deem Worthy. No, I can't even do that, so... Yeah, so I think we just have to pass the turn here. Which is not good, because that means they're going to get Bond 2 back at some point or another. I think I'd probably just tap Obosh. Because um, it can attack us however it wants here, basically. Yeah, they seem like a pretty sweet sacrifice deck. That's for sure. Um, they're going to be able to play Bantu next turn and sack both of these. Which is pretty gross. Hey, there's our black mana. Um, I do think we want to play it. Um, we'll attack here with our prince. guys yeah um i guess i should have used rimrock knight there yeah yep i should have because i would have been able to do a little more damage and tap something down still
I mean, I could cycle Deem Worthy to kill one of the things they'll sack, but at the same time, this lets me kill Bantu again, which is not irrelevant. So... Yeah, we tap down Obosh again here. Take... Th Does this do four? It will do four. Ow. Feels good. Feels good. Oh, no. That's probably worse news. Witherbloom is just as dark and musty as I remember. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be hard to beat in this situation. Although, them losing life, you know, gives us a bit of a puncher's chance. What with, um... I have impeccable study habits. Yeah, okay. Hmm. So the problem is Onyx can make us sack like our creatures and stuff. And that is a problem. Um I kind of think I just have to let her stick around. I mean, it's not like I can really do anything about her. I mean, Zeriel plus Rimrock Knight. You know, we wouldn't have had the mana. We could have played the Knight and used Zeriel here without the adventure part. And that might have been what we needed to do there. But I think we kind of try to attack them down to, like, nothing here. I think that's our main plan. So let's play Rimrock here. I think we play Rimrock and Zeriel here. Which... Which... Probably means we should have attacked with Giant Killer there to chip in some more damage. So they can attack for like 10 here. Um, which is not good. We can use Deem Worthy to kill Obosh. I mean, we're kind of hoping we find a window where we can just do lethal is possible. Playing the Rimrock Knight's kind of nice because if they make me sack a creature... Okay, they don't. Uh, but if they had made me sack a creature, I still would have had two blockers. Come on, <clears throat> there's gotta be something useful. <laughs> that's a pretty funny line because that's sometimes how you feel when you... Uh, Use an ability like that and uh, don't get anything out of it. So, I can just block Obosh with the Devil and kill Dread Wanderer, which I think seems pretty good. Okay, or they'll do that. Um... I think we still do it. Um, it prevents significant damage, puts them back a little bit on the board. Doesn't mean we do a little less on the backswing, but there's a good chance they're going to do something, you know? So, I think, I think it's what we want to do. I could have gone after them in a world where I had, like, uh... Demon fire in my hand or whatever, I probably... I would have considered it, but... It's 
So like if we draw a creature here, we might be able to sneak in a ton of damage. Um, so they can bring back some creatures here, but they do all intertapped. I mean, we can do nine already. Well, that sucks. <laughs> um, we still have a bit of a window here to do a bunch of damage, but maybe not as much as I would have wanted. Um... So, let's deem worthy Mr. Bontu. So, I think we have to be aggressive here and hope it doesn't and hope it goes our way. Um, in other words, I'm going to attack for 5. I could kill Onyx if I use the abilities, but I just don't think we have the luxury of doing so. So we attack for five. Go ahead and play this, and we'll make a zero, zero. And then if they have a way to kill our blocker... If they have a way to kill our blocker, we're going to be in trouble. Um, because they can just put Bone Splitter on this and swing for lethal. But if they can't kill our blocker, we got a bit of a chance here. Of course, yeah, they get to look at the top three to find removal. Seems like a good chance they'll find some, right? There has to be an answer here. Getting a getting Bantu back is pretty sweet, I guess. <laughs> Well, one mana removal spell still kills us here if they have it to kill our 1-1. One, because one. then they can still equip Bone Splitter and swing for 10. <sighs> Come on, Demon Fire off the top. We have a 1 in 24 chance. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, they have a sweet sacrifice deck. Looks like we're not dying this turn, so we have a little bit of a chance here. A little bit. Let's draw, like, Torbrand. That would be pretty spicy. Yeah, that's... 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 That's not Torbrand. Um, okay. So, that means... We just make another zero zero here. I mean another one one. My army ever grows. Still have a little bit of a chance, but Oh. We die to our ultimate here. <clears throat> yeah. We had no way we had no way out of it, so. Well, it wasn't the best aggro deck, but we punished some silly <coughs> good stuff decks. Uh, you know, like wacky four or five color decks in the process. And four and three is all right. I can live with it. 